Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna discuss all about aerial roots on orchids. This is a subject more aimed towards beginners, let's say together with yesterday's subject regarding bud blast. But if you're looking for something a little bit more advanced, more intermediate, let's say, I do have a video which talks all about orchid roots in general, their functions, their characteristics and stuff, so I will link that down below. Today though, we will focus only on the so-called aerial roots of orchids, because yet again, I did have quite a lot of comments asking me what should be done for aerial roots that go shriveled, should they be misted, watered, and so on and so forth. So we're gonna talk about why orchids produce aerial roots in the first place, and of course, if we actually need to care for them in any way, or should we actually do anything. So with that said, let's start by explaining what aerial roots are. Okay, so as the name suggests, we call aerial roots all of these roots which simply do not grow in the pot. They can shoot up towards the sky, towards the sides, wherever. All roots which are not in the pot, we call aerial roots. Now, if you really analyze the situation, you'll discover that calling them this way is and isn't really correct. Epiphytic orchids generally produce aerial roots. And as you might already know, epiphytes are those orchids which do not grow in the soil meaning all of their roots are actually aerial. So it's a little incorrect to suggest that some roots are not aerial. But for the ease of conversation, we created this name for these roots just to differentiate them from the ones which grow in the actual pot. So just to be clear, we are actually referring to cultivated orchids here, not orchids as a generalization in their natural habitat. So keep that in mind. As I was saying, all epiphytic orchids can produce aerial roots. And the most common orchid you will find with roots all over the place is the Phalaenopsis orchid, of course, which produces pretty thick and pretty long roots, but she's not the only one. Cattleyas, dendrobiums, even oncidiums are known to create roots outside of the pot. And if we just think about the Vandas, well, depending on the setup, all of their roots can actually be aerial roots in cultivation. Now, why would orchids produce aerial roots and so-called potted roots? Well, because it is within their nature. Their genetic code tells them to spread out the roots in every direction because in this way, they will have a better chance at anchoring themselves. If roots would only grow in one direction, or follow the moisture or things of the sorts, they would risk not being properly anchored. So it's very common to see some roots just going into the medium towards the moisture and some roots just disregarding the medium and taking to the sky. There used to be a theory long, long time ago which said that orchids which produce a lot of aerial roots don't like their medium and you should change it. That's very false. The only way to know if your orchid does not like the medium is to actually take a look at the potted roots. If those roots don't look healthy, then yes, you might have to change the medium. But the quantity of aerial roots really doesn't signify anything because each orchid produces a different quantity of aerial roots. For example, I am showing you here an epidendrum. Now, this orchid can actually be semi-terrestrial as well, but it does indeed have an epiphytic side. Epidendrums are generally known for creating a lot of aerial roots at each node because they can simply propagate this way. If a section of the stem from an epidendrum orchid were to be ripped off and landed somewhere else, it would survive. It would produce roots, it would anchor itself, feed itself, and everything would be okay. So it is a survival mechanism. In no way does it mean this orchid does not like its medium. So the quantity of aerial roots can actually depend on species or variety or the state of the health of the orchid. The more roots and the healthier an orchid is, the more it is prone to create aerial roots simply by statistics, nothing else. The more roots you actually have on an orchid, the more there is a chance that some of them will be outside the pot. And as a general rule for potted orchids, it is actually a better idea to have more roots in the pot or at least half of the amount of roots in the pot just so you don't have issues with watering. Roots that grow outside of the pot are perfectly healthy. They can survive very well outside of the pot. But for your ease of care, it is in your best interest to have roots inside the pot as well because you can just control humidity better. In the air, if you would only have roots in the air, it would be the equivalent of actually growing this orchid bare-rooted or mounted. You would have to water it every day perhaps and it could be a hassle. But in no way does it mean that orchids only with aerial roots cannot survive. They absolutely can. All of these orchids are epiphytic, but we pot them just to make our life a little easier with them and in return be more prone to actually give them the hydration they need. 
But as you will grow orchids, you'll discover that sometimes you don't actually need to water or spray or do anything for the aerial roots and they will just continue to grow and be okay. How can that be? Well, these roots adapt to their environment. In my experience, the roots of epiphytic orchids are a lot more adaptable than those of the terrestrial orchids. They can actually adapt to the environment they're growing in. Therefore, they can actually become more tolerant of drought and lack of moisture. Aerial roots are very, very adapted to air and very low humidity. Of course, they will absorb the humidity in the environment and the air surrounding them, but as a structure, they are actually pretty different than the roots inside the pot. If you ever try to pot aerial roots and pretty much suddenly change their environment into a more moisture-rich environment, you will discover that some roots will die off. They will not be able to cope. Some of them might survive depending on what type of medium you're using and how aerated it is, but as a general rule, we don't actually pot aerial roots, particularly if we want to switch to a very moisture retentive medium. At the same time, roots which have been potted will not be as efficient as aerial roots to withstand lack of moisture. So depending on the type of environment they're growing in, roots of an epiphytic orchid can actually adapt. So for most of us, caring for aerial roots doesn't really imply anything. As I was saying, these roots are adaptable, so they can adapt to your environment. In very extreme cases, aerial roots can actually shrivel a little bit and not grow. Usually this happens when the humidity is very, very, very low, temperatures might be very high. But in my experience, if you have at least over 40% relative humidity at all times in your environment, the aerial roots shouldn't really have much issues growing. The higher the humidity, the more they will grow, and actually the less they will stop growing. There is absolutely nothing wrong with spraying aerial roots or watering them if you think your environment is a little bit too dry and you would like to keep the aerial roots in good condition on your orchid. But for most of us, it really doesn't imply anything. These roots can get some water when we're watering the orchid, depending of course how we water it, but at least as far as I'm concerned, I don't really do anything to care for them. So if you're a beginner, just let the aerial roots grow, see how they're doing, how they're developing. You might actually discover that they're growing very well on their own without you actually having to do anything. No fertilizer, no water, nothing like the potted roots and in many many cases they will just grow. If you do actually want to maintain in good condition the aerial roots of your orchid, you can definitely spray them from time to time or make sure that when you water the orchid you soak or water the aerial roots as well. There's nothing wrong with that, but just make sure that when you mist the roots, you don't let water accumulate in the joints of the leaves and in the crown. Leaving water standing there for a long time can accumulate pathogens and lead to rotting. This is not like nature here, so just be very careful with that. But if you can water a little bit the roots, that's perfectly fine. It's also perfectly fine if the aerial roots just stop growing at some point. Some roots will stop growing, some of them will continue growth. It doesn't really mean anything, certainly not that your orchid is in trouble. And sometimes even if you spray or water the roots, they will sometimes stop growing and then start growing again, depending what the orchid is doing. Sometimes when it is in bud or in flower or even growing a leaf, it could be a little too much for the orchid, so she could actually pause a little bit the roots, but that is okay. It absolutely does not mean they're dead. As long as they're stiff, just like with the potted roots, everything is okay. Being that they are exposed to light, aerial roots typically do photosynthesize, so if you water them, they should become green. This will help you out to when you want to determine if an aerial root is still alive or not. You will probably notice that some roots are just very, very shriveled. These are most likely dead, but because they don't have permanent contact with water, they're not actually mushy, they're papery and hollow. Also, when you water them, the dead roots will not necessarily green up, except if they have some algae on them, but you can notice them when they're wet a lot better because the color difference, in my opinion, will be pretty striking. Aerial roots have a lot of chlorophyll usually, so when they're wet, if they're able to absorb water, they will be a very vivid green. With aerial roots, yellow roots might actually mean that they are dead. You know that in the case of potted roots, yellow or white roots can mean nothing, they can be perfectly fine, they just didn't have access to light. Well, in the case of aerial roots, they all have access to light, so if they're yellow, 
most probably they're on their way out or they're already dead. You are actually free to cut them. It's not as important as with potted woods because this is not a contained environment in which things can rot off. It's actually dry. But for the sake of tidying things up, you can definitely go ahead and cut all of these roots which are dead. In the end, the choice of caring and maintaining for the aerial roots will have to be yours. You can definitely try to make sure that they are in good condition, but if you don't really have enough time about it and you have a good root system inside the pot, it's now mandatory that you keep the aerial roots in good condition as well. However, I would definitely advise against cutting healthy aerial roots. And this is a comment that I find in the comment section quite often. My orchid is full of aerial roots, it takes a lot of space on the shelf. I want to cut the aerial roots, should I? I would always advise against it or not encourage people to cut them because you never know when you're going to lose the potted roots. So the aerial roots will be a plan B for the orchid. You can definitely hydrate the orchid through the aerial roots. And also when you cut good roots, you are opening up good tissue and that can sometimes get infected. It's very, very rare, but it can happen. I understand that these roots can be a little unruly, maybe for some people unsightly. Some of us really love them. I like aerial roots. As long as I do have a lot of roots in the pot and they get hydration, I am okay with aerial roots. So the choice again is yours. I just don't want to encourage anybody to cut the aerial roots because they do have a purpose, more in nature than in cultivation, of course, where we can control things. But even in cultivation, things can happen. You never know when the potted roots will just surprise you one day and simply rot off because you just didn't repot the orchid in time or you watered a little bit too often. Now, as I was saying, not all orchids produce aerial roots or have roots which can cope with such amount of air. Usually terrestrial orchids will not produce aerial roots. And the most popular orchid in this category is the Paphiopetalum orchid. With this orchid, we need to make sure that the entirety of the root system is potted. Even the place where new roots start to grow, it needs to be a little bit covered because in this case, whatever root is exposed to air a little bit too much will simply stop growing. These orchids cannot tolerate at all roots growing in the air. They might tolerate it maybe in 100% humidity, but such an environment is pretty rare, particularly for home growers. So with these orchids, aerial roots do not exist. You don't need to let roots be outside of the pot or anything of the sorts. And also you will discover that they will not grow roots shooting for the sky just like a Phalaenopsis. And that's perfectly normal. You don't have to have aerial roots on Paphiopetalums or other orchids such as the Cymbidiums and even the Zycopetalums. And even if aerial roots are very common on epiphytic orchids, it's not a rule that all of them will put out a big amount of roots outside of the pot. The roots the orchid has inside the pot need to be in perfect condition. And if everything is okay inside the pot, you don't actually need to have aerial roots. And them lacking doesn't mean the orchid is sick or anything of the sorts. Some epiphytic orchids actually come from very high humidity places. And even if some roots will try to go towards the air, they will simply stop growing. They will not be dead, but they will not continue growth. So on average, you'll have more roots inside the pot than in the air. But this will depend on your environment. If you have very high humidity, you will discover even with Oncidium types and other moisture loving orchids, some aerial roots which are doing just fine outside of the pot. Just know that it's not a rule. So don't freak out if you don't have aerial roots on your orchid, but you have a lot of potted roots. And as a last idea, the color of the aerial roots can differ from orchid to orchid. In the case of Phalaenopsis, it will be gray, silvery. In the case of Cattleyas or Oncidiums, it will be white. When you water these aerial roots, you will notice them going green in most cases. With some orchids, the roots will actually be brownish or reddish, such as in the case of Maxillarias. So it really, really depends on the species. So again, don't panic if the color of the root on your orchid is not green or white or anything of the sorts. It might actually be normal. Just check out the species you have. And I do believe that's about it on aerial roots. I hope you found this interesting. And again, if you want to go more in depth with roots in general on orchids, I will link it down below to my video, which talks, I think, everything about roots. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching and for suggesting this video. If you have other suggestions of more in-depth videos, even some that I did five years ago, just let me know down below in the comment section. I am absolutely fine with redoing them, making them more complete, of course, because yeah, in five years, a lot of things have changed. 
So alrighty guys, you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other fun orchid subjects, and if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video, just turn on notifications for my channel. Also if you're interested in my setup and the products that I use and so on, just expand the description, I list everything there, and with that said, I'll see you guys next time, bye!